Good job on getting that gold medal. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Um, I guess what's uh, what, what do you envision uh, camp like uh, over the next couple of weeks, knowing that Kawhi's going to be a little limited and you have a, a big new group here? Um, I think a lot of learning, but um, most importantly, just getting in shape. I thought last year um, the camp really set the tone for our season. I thought you know having a hard training camp and um, yeah, set the tone early. It was really good for us. I thought we got a lot of learning, a lot of conditioning, and um, that's going to be our main focus is having a hard camp, getting in shape, but make sure we're executing on both sides of the basketball. With, with, with Kawhi dealing with the knee stuff, um, progressing but, but not there yet, I guess, uh, do, do you have kind of like a, a game plan for how you want to work him into some of these practices over time? No, we just got to, you know, just – go step by step and just make sure he's checking all the boxes and um you know the medical staff is going to tell us when he's you know ready to do everything and what he can do um so our focus is just you know the guys are practicing we got to make sure we're doing it hard we're doing it the right way and no shortcuts and so that's got to be our mentality like every night we got to come out and play hard compete at a high level and no shortcuts and so that's got to be our, our main focus so um obviously losing pg is a big deal offensively defensively um but with James and Kawhi, when Kawhi's on the floor, like, do you feel that it can, I guess, in a way, streamline things offensively where it's two guys who are the main offensive hubs as opposed to trying to get a third guy to also be one and kind of getting everyone else to fit in around that? Can this streamline the process? I mean, that's that's the idea. You know, I mean, when you lose a, a player of PG's caliber, you know, it's always tough to try to replace, you know, someone – that kind of player, you know, we understand it on both sides of the basketball. Um, but with that being said, like, you know, now, you know, James and Kawhi, like you said, our focus as far as offensively, you know, of course, Norm, but um, post do a little bit more. And then everybody else has got to fit in around, you know, to make sure that um, you know, we have the right spacing, we have the right guys with the ball in their hands making the right plays. And so that's got to be our main focus now. Hi, Orlando. What additional responsibilities do you expect James will have? And then the departures and the fluidity. More pick and rolls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, more pick and rolls. Um, you know, scoring the basketball more, taking more shots. Um, but he's a dynamic playmaker also. So, um, you know, with the responsibility of being the best two players with Kawhi and James, like, they got to make everyone else better as well. And he understand that. So, yeah. Warren's talked a lot about the internal competition that you guys are going to have for rotation spots and things of that nature and how he thought that's going to benefit the group. You do have four returning starters, though. Do you see that being a competition for that fifth spot, or is that something that you think just makes sense already with the guy? No, definitely a competition. You know, I want um, everyone to come and compete, you know, for their chance and opportunity to play. And so, um, that's going to be, like I said, at camp. Understand we got to play hard, we got to compete every night, and it starts in training camp and it starts for those positions, like you said. Tommy, you, you got the new deal. Uh, first off, how did that feel to get that finally done? And <laughs> it kind of it felt like, great. Like, what does that mean for you to know the faith that they have in you as well? No, it felt great, you know. Um, like you said, for them to um, feel good about having me here, um, the relationships that we have with, like I said, with Mr. Bomber and, and Lawrence in the front office. You know, I think they have a, a great deal of respect for me and, and confidence in me. And I have the same in them. And so the contract speaks for itself for just, you know, me coming back here for, you know, five years fully guaranteed. And for them to bring me back five years fully guaranteed just means a lot, you know. And so, um, you know, I'm happy to be here. Like I said, we have our own home now, which is which is huge. I can actually leave my shoes in the locker room and not, <laughs> not have to carry them out after every game. You know, that's big. And, you know, leave personal things here because now we have our own home. So um, that's a huge plus as well. What's something that you – oh, I'm so sorry. Um, what's something that you learned over in Paris that you maybe want to teach these guys or maybe want to translate this season? Um, just hard work. You know, the caliber players that we had over for the Olympics – um, to see the work they put in every single day and how hard they prepared and um, how locked in and focused they were, you know, to win the gold medal. And so, you know, you see that, you know, when you come back to our team, like our young guys, like being focused, being competitive every day, you know, always trying to get an edge on your competitors and make sure you get better each day. And so that's what we had to do with the Olympics. Like other teams have been practicing, been together for six, seven, eight years, practicing for two or three months, and we had like seven days to throw it all together, you know, and so – 
you know, we've got better, a lot of film sessions. And so I want our young guys to see that, to be able to prepare like that, to get better, you know, each day. So um, I think they will do that too as well. How do you guys go about, um, y'all were dead last in past the game last year. How many? Dead last. Dead last. Teams. Okay. Dead last. <laughs> catch and shoot three point attempts. Y'all were good at making them, guys. And take enough. Y'all ain't taking them. Yeah. How do you go about fixing that and addressing that going into this season? Um, Love. Well, to be honest, we gotta play faster. I think we gotta play faster. We gotta um, make sure we're throwing an advanced pass, attacking early in transition. I think we have players that can do that. Um, but then, like you said, we gotta take our catch and shoot threes. Like we've been showing it. Uh, we talked about it as a staff like all summer, even though I was gone a lot. Just talking about how we generate more threes. But the big emphasis is that we gotta take our shots. Like when we're open, we can't turn down threes. And so um, we gotta get into the paint. You know, get into the paint or die trying and then making the right play once we get there. And so um, we've always been a good sh uh, three-point shooting team. We just don't take enough. And so we've been talking about that all summer, of uh, finding ways to get more threes up and quality threes as well. How do you, how do you generate those transition opportunities, though, when you have two of the best isolation players in the game who want to play more in a half-court set? We got to advance it. And then if we don't have the advance and attack, they get it back, and then they're able to do what they want to do. But we got to change our style of play. We got to change the way we – I mean, I know we've been, like, top four or five in offense or whatever, but, you know, we still got to change the way we play if we want to be successful. Like, we know James and Kawhi can ISO, and they can get their shots and, and get their points. But we got to generate, you know, open threes for our guys. We got to be able to play faster attack, you know, say get to the rim early in transition. And if it's not there, then we always throw it back and get it to our guys, and they can make plays as well. So just playing faster, getting off of it, getting it back, and then attack from there. Ty, uh, Ty what perspective can you share with this past summer with what you saw from Kawhi when he was able to practice with the USA group and then what concerns the program had about keeping him? I can't remember. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> can't remember. <laughs> so I kind of along the lines of my last question with that internal competition, you guys have a lot of guards that seemingly could be competing for minutes. Obviously, the returning starters are, are James and Terrence. But when you look at the guard rotation off the bench, do you have any idea of how that may shake out right now? Or is that something you have to wait and see in camp? Have something I have to wait and see in camp. I think um, have those guys compete and um, have a true competition. And then you know whoever wins it out will be starting. What are some of the... So even the starting, like, maybe guard position next to James may still be we'll the see. competition. Okay. Yeah. What are you looking for? <laughs> huh? What are you looking for in that competition? Um, someone who can defend that, in that group, um, make open shots, um, be able to attack the basket, make plays. And like I said, T-Man has been great, you know, at doing that. And so, um, you know, we just got to see um, how it plays out. So you guys added um, KPJ on, on a multi-year deal this year, this summer. Um, does that signify some kind of belief that you believe he can make an impact, um, you know, in, in a rotation setting? In yeah, he definitely can make an impact. I mean, you don't, you know, get paid twenty million dollars a year, you know, in Houston if you can't play, you know. So he's a great talent, and um, it's going to be my job to make sure we get the best out of him. You know, he can score the basketball, he can make plays, and uh, I'm going to stay on him. I'm going to coach him hard, you know, because you know he's he's a great talent. And for us to have success, he's going to be a big part of that. So I'm excited for for him. I'm excited for the opportunity to, um, to get to coach him, but he's going to be a big part of it. So it sounds like you've already kind of envisioned how you want to use him, where you want to use him. Yeah, Ty, um, you bring. Jeff, JVG on board to coach under you. Um, what what are you kind of looking f for from him coaching wise this year? Like, is he going to focus more on the defensive end for you guys? And kind of like, what does that mean for you guys' relationship that you were able to coax him after so many years to finally, you know, kind of be under you? Yeah, I mean, it stems back to the Cleveland days, you know, just trying to get, you know, JVG and, um, you know, and his daughter was in school, so he wanted to make sure he waited till she graduated. Um, but to have him now, like I said, just excited. You know, I had a chance to play for him, had a chance to play for Stan, and just seeing what they were able to do as coaches, how they had the responsibility of both offense and defense, doing all every shoot around, all 82 games, doing every prep, you know, and just seeing how hard he worked and um, how, how, like, disciplined you had to be on both sides of the basketball. If you was a – half an inch off, you know, he's going to get on you. Like, he's that particular. And so um, I think, you know, having him back in the game, he's excited. You know, I'm excited to have him. Um, I thought D.C. did a great job, you know, you know, while he was here as well. 
Um, but like I said, I'm excited to have JBG and like I said, running the defense and, um, you know, I always give him, give him stuff saying like, he's not happy unless he's mad. So, you know, so, you know, we need that. We need that right now. And so he's, he's going he's gonna to be good for us. How do you guys improve defensively? Like what are some of the tangible things that you're looking for? Play hard, play harder, rebound the basketball, and then get back in transition. You know, I thought our half court defense was pretty good. Um, we can be better, but transition, like, that's just about, you know, mindset and effort. Like, we got to be better at getting back in transition, um, even though we do want to crash more, but you can do both. And so if you can't do both, then you can't play. And secondly, I think rebound the basketball. Like, Zoo can't be our only rebound. Like, our guards have to rebound. Everyone has to stick their nose in and rebound the basketball to secure and, um, you know, finish the possession. So we, we struggled with that last year as well. What's Two more. It, what's it like for you to get Nico back? Great. Yeah, it's great. You know, I think I talk about it all the time, like, you know, two of my favorite guys is, you know, Deli and, and Nico, you know, just all about team, whatever you need him to do, whatever position, guard whoever. Um, he's a great connector, like, you know, not looking for shots. He's not looking at stats of how many assists or how many you know shots he's taking. Like, he just wants to win. And whatever it takes to do that, that's what he does. He's a winning player. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited to have him back. I know that last year, a bit of a sensitive word, but... When you when you go through training camp, do you, do you expect to find an identity that soon? Is there like? Yeah, know, we're gonna find an identity this year. But <laughs> is, you can also like. Is that, is that also something that can grow throughout the year, or is it something you need to see right away? I think with you know five new guys, I mean, I think it's something that's gonna grow throughout the year. I think you know acquire well, really four, but you know Nico's been here, but um, you know I just, just got to kind of see how they fit in and you know what they bring. You know, I watch them all the teams, but you know, plan for us would be different. So just kind of just see what they bring. Um, offensively and defensively to incorporate that. But, I mean, but our identity to start is going to be a hard-playing team, a hard-nosed team that's going to compete on the defensive end, you know, every night. And so nothing's going to be easy. And that's why we got notorious JBG. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thanks,